In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. In the epistle lesson that we just heard a few minutes ago, St. Paul said a very strange thing in his letter to a group of churches that he had established in the Roman province of Galatia, which is now modern-day Turkey. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I, myself, who live, but Christ who lives in me. And he said this in order to help clarify for those church communities the true definition of what it means to live a disciplined and a virtuous way of life as a Christian. That because of Christ's crucifixion and resurrection, we are now able to live the kind of life that the God desired for us when in the beginning he created us. We are now, because of his death and resurrection, once again, able to be eternally united to our God through our life in and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we're able, once again, to live out our lives here in this world in a way that reflects the glory of God back into the world around us. Through everything we do, and through everything we say, and through everything that happens to us here in this life. At one point in another place, St. Paul said to the church at Corinth, that what we are called to be in this world is to be a mirror of God's glory to all the world and to everyone that we come in contact with in this life. Because by reflecting the glory of God as, as mirrors, St. Paul said, that God's glory will grow brighter in us and that somehow, mystically, by doing that, we will actually be transformed into that same image, he said, from glory to glory. Or in other words, by holding on to God within us and by uniting ourselves to his Son, Jesus Christ, we will become more and more of what we were created to be, an image and a likeness of God himself. And St. Paul, after his miraculous conversion to Christianity in Damascus, he spent the remainder of his entire life reminding the world that our life is not only about us as human beings, but that our life as human beings is all about God. And then in the gospel lesson that we heard this morning, we learned that God will stop at nothing by using whatever and whomever he wants to reveal and display his glory to the world in which he created. The Gospel lesson is a story about how God revealed his glory to the world in the life of two different individuals one day in the beautiful region of Galilee. Two people who were both bold enough and humble enough to approach Jesus. Two people who recognized that they both needed help in their lives, and two people who were strong enough in their faith to believe that if they did indeed approach Jesus, that somehow he would be able to help them accomplish 
what they were unable to accomplish on their own. The first individual that we heard about was a man named Jarius. And Jarius had a 12-year-old daughter who was dying. The Gospel says that Jarius was a ruler of the synagogue and that he was a powerful and important and well-known individual. And it says that Jarius had to push his way through a very large crowd of people who had gathered around Jesus on that day to approach him. And it says that when he got to Jesus, Jurius humbly fell down at his feet in the middle of that huge crowd and begged Jesus to come to his home in order to heal his daughter. And so Jesus, it says, agreed to go with Jurius. And eventually at the end of the gospel, we learn that Jesus not only healed the daughter, but that he actually raised her from the dead. But before he gets to Jurius' home, the gospel says that as he was going, there was a woman hidden in the crowd who was not a public official like Jurius, but who also had something she needed from Jesus. She had been suffering from an illness for 12 entire years. And it says that although she had spent all her money trying to get help, there was no physician that had been able to help her for all those years. So it says that she also was able to push her way up to Jesus in that large crowd like Jorius did, but that she approached him in an entirely and different way. All she did was simply to reach out and touch the hem of the garment that Jesus was wearing. And it says that when she did it, that she was immediately healed at that very moment. And it also goes on to say about that event that Jesus noticed. It says that he knew that someone had miraculously touched him because there must have been a lot of people touching and pushing up against him in that large, large crowd because it says he felt power at that moment leave his body. And when the woman realized that Jesus knew that something had happened, it says that she also, like Jurius, humbly approached Jesus and fell down before him and that Jesus said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. So the gospel is about two different types of people and about two different approaches and about two different needs, both leading up, however, to the same result so that the glory of God could be revealed to the world, to the world through those two individuals. And we're so blessed in our basilica now to have an icon of this gospel event. It's over here with the, in the arch with the miracles. It's the second one. There's Julius and his daughter and Jesus and the woman who was ill, um, all in that same icon, raising of Julius' daughter, it says. So if you get a chance, you can look at it. We're so blessed to have all these miracles and all these parables, and I'm sure we're going to refer to them a lot in our sermons. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this gospel lesson shows us that even in a world where bad things may happen to us from time to time, that it's not spiritually beneficial or spiritually healthy to dwell in that space. Because as Christians, united in Christ, as St. Paul says, our lives are not only about the things that do or that don't happen to us on a daily basis, but that our lives are about what we do 
with the things that happen to us in this life and about learning to humbly recognize that we may not be able to only rely on ourselves in this life and about learning to trust God in all things and about learning to approach God and about not being afraid to reach out to Him when we need Him and about freeing ourselves, setting ourselves free so that every situation that does happen to us, both the good and the bad, that they can be opportunities for the glory of God to be revealed through us also, like it was for Jurius and for that ill woman that we heard about in the gospel today. This is what our life is about. This is what reflecting on the image of God to the world as if looking in a mirror means. This is what it looks like to have Christ living in us. It's what Julius learned on that day. And it's what the woman in the crowd experienced on that day when she just simply reached out and touched the hem of his garment. And this is what we're all called to reflect upon today as we contemplate our own successes and our own suffering in life. Because the truth is, according to this gospel, God will and does use whatever and whomever he wants to display his glory. The truth is that every day is his day. And that every day is not necessarily all about us, but that every day is, or at least should be, necessarily all about God and about his revelation and about his glory to the world around us. Sometimes, maybe even using any one of us at any given time to make that revelation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.